Hey, good day. My name is Justin Case, anchor and reporter here at WYMT. Thank you for taking the time to watch this and allowing me to share with you some of my experiences with live shots, anchoring Facebook Lives and reporting. Enjoy. WYMT's Justin Case, he's there live to give us a look at the destruction. Justin. Steve, it is loud, it is wet, and the rain is continuing to fall here in Harlan County. This community is one of the hardest hit by flooding in this area. And what you see here behind me, this used to be a car, believe it or not, and it was actually pulled out of the culvert about 20 minutes ago or so. Now, when we first got here to Kaywood Branch Road, Steve, we were told that there were two vehicles that were washed out of people's driveways into the culvert here, carried down to the base of the community. Steve, when I just drove into downtown Painesville not too long ago, I was met with with police cars and barricades blocking many of the streets here. A lot of the streets are still closed down. You can see some traffic now flowing behind me, but some barricades are still up because there's widespread damage here, but it's really just localized to Paintsville. Also, it looks really dark here. A lot of the power's out in Paintsville as well as the traffic lights here. So please use caution if you do drive in this area this evening. But also right behind me, you can see this is the steeple Andrew was just talking about. It's kind of hard to see in the dark, but the steeple is down. A tree, a massive tree has been uprooted right down the street and a roof blown off a local business. There are eight sets of floodgates throughout the city of Pineville. And as you can see here behind me, these floodgates on 20 25 remain open. Now the mayor of Pineville says that he has crews on standby in case they need to come out here and close the gates because of dangerously high levels of floodwaters. And about 50 feet behind this shoulder, there's still some yellow caution tape there blowing in the wind. And we are told that that is where the bomb was found, only about 50 feet from the sewer plant and very close to a main line that connects to the sewer plant, which city officials say would have been catastrophic had it actually damaged that pipe. Good evening, I'm Justin Case. Tonight, the hunt is on for the man police say shot and killed a father of two during a robbery attempt. The murder happened early this morning at the A and B quick stop in Knox County. Here is video of the man police need your help finding. The government shutdown enters day one, not the federal government shutdown you might be thinking of, but a local one. Tonight, the Knott County Fiscal Court voted in favor of a partial county government shutdown instead of adding any new taxes to people in the county. I went to Hindman today as the new policies went into effect immediately. And thank you very much, Andrew. And yeah, those rainfall totals were crazy in yeah. Harlan County, in Everts. And, you know, we saw the floodwaters crashing through several mm -hmm. communities. And we were sent video today of floodwaters actually picking up cars and carrying them downstream. And I went to Everts in Harlan County to talk with people there about the damage. Yesterday, officials in Knott County voted for a partial county government shutdown. This means nearly 70% of all county employees will be laid off. Health insurance benefits will be canceled for the remaining employees and elected officials, but it also affects the county road department. I went back to Hindman today to find out what people can expect as severe weather hits. It's going to take a long time before this area can be fixed. They say the rain has to stop, the flood levels have to go down before they can come back here and really see how much is damaged and to what extent. No one was inside, but one man was injured, so we're not sure if he ran in the building to try to stop the fire, put out the fire, or get something. That we're not sure of, but one man was burned in the fire. I don't have much time to talk because we have a live shot coming up on Mountain News at 6, which you can watch on WYMT.com or the WYMT app. But that's all coming up. He was actually airlifted from the scene. I got video of the helicopter landing right here, right next to me. Actually, up until an hour ago, we thought it was just one person that was shot. We just learned that there are now two victims, two people have been shot. At least one of them was flown out to UK Medical Center from right here at the National Guard Armory. Road crews don't even have any equipment big enough to break this boulder down because that's what's going to have to happen. They're going to have to break this boulder down. There is a giant rock smasher from what I've been told. And the contractors are going to be out here Hopefully, as early as today, if not because of the bad weather, it may happen tomorrow morning. Firefighters had to smash into it to put out the fire. Luckily, the fire has been put out. No injuries were reported. No more threats to this building, this hangar, or other, other any other hangars nearby. But everything inside was lost, and it's pretty unbelievable when you see the video. And I hope you'll join us on Mountain News at 6 coming up because you're going to see that video. You're going to hear from the owner of the hangar.
Two county officials who grew up here and continue to see the needs of people with very little are making sure even the most forgotten people here feel a sense of love from the community. The assistant Perry County attorney and a detective from the Perry County Sheriff's Office are driving around the area, dropping off donated items to homeless people they find along the way. I followed them tonight and learned why this project is so important to the people we hardly see. With a roof over your head and a bed to crawl into each night, it can be hard to think about the men and women who sleep in places like this. There's eight to ten people we know of who are not being served by Hope House for one reason or another, by their choice or by some other issue, who literally sleep under the bridges or in the parking structure. Sam Collins and Detective Paul Campbell drive around the city looking for anyone living out in the elements, hoping they can pass along bags filled with things to make their lives a little easier. A tent, sleeping bag, emergency blankets, a first aid slash survival kit, hand warmers, a rain poncho, we just saw dangerously cold temperatures last week. This week, people living without homes are having to deal with the rain. Nobody deserves to starve to death. Nobody deserves to freeze to death. You know, everybody needs some just basic kindness thrown their way. Sam Collins says it's easy to judge someone in their position and say things like, why don't they just get a job? He says that only fuels his mission of connecting with people in vulnerable situations. They don't have any reason to trust us, but if we can help one person, it's all worth it. Helping those who are struggling with basic needs on a daily basis. A Night to Shine is an event many here have been looking forward to for close to a year. It's a prom style event that honors and celebrates people with special needs in our community. Last year, there were about 200 people at the event. This year, close to 500 people. I went to the dance tonight to learn why this event is so important to so many. As the night began, Friends and family clapped as the stars of the night walked along the red carpet. This night is to, to uplift them and to make them the center of attention and to, to just love on them. With makeup and shoe shine stations, food and music, this event aims at making everyone's night special. The best part about this is um, a prom for my son. He's uh, 17 and he has autism. And just things like this for him to get out in the community and be accepted. The dance floor here is packed. Many say that's their favorite part about this event. A big party for everyone, buddy. What's your favorite part about all this? The music. I'll do music. I love it. I love it, buddy. And with hundreds in attendance, many here say they are very thankful they get to spend this night with friends and family. Yeah, I had a good time, too. I had a good time. And also, I brought my fiance with me. And She's the love of my life. I love her to death. It's a night to shine and have a good time. They're special. They, they're just like everybody else. Treating everyone like they are a king or a queen. A Night to Shine is a national event sponsored by the Tim Tebow Foundation. Many people from Journey Christian Church volunteered to make that event happen. Organizers hope to make this a yearly tradition. Cade Lindsay got a life-saving call on Valentine's Day, giving him the news that he would be getting a new heart. Just days after spending nearly three months in a St. Louis hospital, the Harlan County teen was asked to throw out the first pitch at his brother's baseball game. And tonight, Cade finally took the mound. Hey, good job, Cade. I'm proud. I'm proud of you. Thanks. I'm glad that you're back. I'm glad. All right. I'm glad you're back, buddy. We love you. All right. Spending nearly three months in the hospital after receiving a heart transplant, Cade Lindsay says... It's great. Really happy to be home. Cade returned home on Monday. That is when his brother's baseball coach invited him to throw out the first pitch. When I was in St. Louis, I started wanting to play baseball. Following in the footsteps of his big brother. All my brothers over there, they're the best. My, uh, teammates. They've been so supportive with everything's going on. They don't care if I miss practice sometimes to see him. And hey, listen, this is for you, bud. All right? Everything for you today, bud. Thanks. Cade's mother says love and support never stopped pouring in for Cade from everyone in the community. It kind of feels like we never left. It, it feels like the whole time we were up there, they were just really rooting Cade on and supporting him. And Cade's family knows just how much of a miracle it is that he is here. It's been amazing just seeing how much he's progressed and gotten better. I mean, to get to the point where he can throw a pitch at a baseball game, that's awesome. 
Nothing is impossible when a community comes together. Cade's mother says he is doing well. She says the doctors ran tests on Cade's heart Monday. All of them came back without showing any signs of rejection. He will continue with regular checkups in Cincinnati.